Ready? Okay, we're going to get started. Good morning. Um, if you didn't remember me, I'm Pastor Milky from Grace Crivet, and glad to be with you today. Um, we're going to begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to sing the hymn of praise, I believe, uh, Let Me Learn of Jesus. A few years ago, actually a lot of years ago, when your pastor, Pastor Sargent, and I were in high school, we had a teacher, we had physics class. I think we were actually in the same class. Can't remember, too many years ago. Um, but we had a teacher, physics, we learned about things like light and sound and those kinds of things, electricity. And he had a practice that the room was kind of arranged in a circle, and in the middle there was a table and a chair, and whoever got the lowest score on the test had to sit in there till the next test. So hopefully you got a better score on the next test so you didn't have to sit in that middle seat, right? That wasn't where anybody wanted to sit, right? That wasn't a place of honor. Because it meant that at least for that one test, either you weren't that smart or you didn't study. <laughs> so you always hoped to get a better score, so you got out of that seat and got back. Well, what, do you, what would you think about putting God in the center there in that not so smart seat? Huh? Would that be a good thing to do? No. You're all shaking your head no. You know that wouldn't be a smart thing to do. But yet, that's what a lot of people want to do, right? They think God is foolish. They think God isn't that smart. They think God doesn't know what he's doing. The Apostle Paul was writing to some Christians in a city called Corinth. And, and he wanted people to know the truth about Jesus, how, how he was the crucified and risen Savior. But there were other people who thought Paul was just foolish, that what he was teaching them was foolishness. The, the Jewish people that Paul talked to, some of them thought he was foolish because they couldn't conceive of God dying on a cross. That was beneath him, right? Many of the Jews thought Jesus came to kill the Romans, not be killed by the Romans, and not on a cross at that. That was the, that was the worst way to die. And, and then the Greek people, the non-Jews, the, they, they, they thought Paul was talking foolishness because in their minds, you know, they were looking for someone to, to give them real complicated things to think about. And, and really, the gospel is quite simple, right? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. And certainly, they, they couldn't wrap their heads around not a, a, a God who, who died and then rose again. And so both of them really had... had put God in the middle seat, right? In the dumb seat. They thought God was foolish. They, they thought God didn't make any sense. Listen to what Paul wrote to these people. Jews demand miraculous signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block, literally a death trap 
to Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles, the non-Jews. There are a lot of people like that yet today, aren't there? That think God just doesn't know what he's talking about. That he's foolish. Sometimes we, have, we do too because we have a little part of us that thinks that way called our sinful nature, right? I just read this morning before I came here how some people, some supposedly really smart people spent a lot of money and time studying why we don't have tails. And they came to the conclusion is that the difference between humans and apes and chimpanzees is because of a little sequence in the DNA. And they came to the conclusion they had to have a big complicated scheme of evolution over millions of years. Well, we all know why that sequence is missing. Different, right? Because that's how God wanted it. <laughs> Pretty simple, but they can't believe it. They want something more, huh? Still happens today. How many people think the idea of God dying on a cross for us or God becoming human or God rising from the dead is, we can't understand that, so we're not going to believe that. Huh? Still happens today. By faith. God-given faith. God, a gift of God, right? That faith that he works in us through his word. We no longer see God as foolish, do we? By faith, you and I see that our God sent Jesus into this world to do much more for us than give us some complicated scheme to save ourselves or to, to overcome the people called the Romans. But we, we see exactly what God did, right? that he sent Jesus to come to die on that cross. That's what we've been hearing every Wednesday night during Lent, right? We've been hearing about that. Or every Wednesday afternoon. That's what Jesus came to do. God sent Jesus to, to become one of us, to, be, to live for us, to be crucified for us, to die for us, and yes, to rise for us on the third day. And he did that to defeat sin, death, and the devil for us. That's not foolishness, is it? That's good news. So what God has done might sound like foolishness to an unbeliever. To us who, by God's grace and God's power, believe the truth about Jesus it's the farthest thing from foolishness, isn't it? We see God's love. And we see that he gives us the certain hope of heaven through Jesus. And for that truth, we thank and praise our God forever. As we think about that, I'm going to ask you a couple questions here. Why, why do you think some people think God is foolish? Why do you think God, why do you think some people think God is foolish? Think about that. You, you might know people that think God is foolish. Why do they think God is foolish? Any ideas? Okay, I'm going to pick on people then, if we have no one. You, why do you think some people think God is foolish? They don't believe. Okay, and why do you think they don't believe? What, what gets in the way of them believing? Okay, that might be. Yeah, they, 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 They've never put themselves in the path of God's power, right? The, the, the Word of God huh? and the Holy Spirit. Why do you think other people don't believe? Because um, they, don't, they like devils more than, than God. What did you say? They, because they love devils than God. In, in essence, yeah. Um, th did you have something? Yeah, they, you know, the thing is, they think they know. Oh, you got one more idea? Uh, because they put money in front of God. Money in front of God? Yeah, ultimately, they think they know more than God, right? You know, that, think about it. 
the person, the unbeliever, think about baptism. They think it's worthless, right? Some little, some little water and some word, what can that do? They think about the Lord's Supper, a little bread and wine, what can that do? They think about a book, huh? this old book, what can that do? Huh? Um, and so they, they think they know more than God, right? And, and, but what a, what a blessing to know that God knows more than us. Would you really want a, to believe in a God that's just like you? I sure want, because I know how much I don't know. <laughs> and I know how much I don't always do the right thing. But the, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing that, that God, we can't fit God in our little heads or whatever, because that means he's bigger than us, and that means he can do what we could never do, save ourselves from sin, and he's done that on the cross. And finally, we aren't any better than the unbelievers by nature, are we? We don't come in this world more smarter. It's not be, we're not here because we're smarter, right? How, how, do, how do we know the truth? How do we know the truth about Jesus? Did we come up with that on our own? Did we think about that on our own? The older kids, you, you've memorized the third article in the, uh, the explanation, haven't you? I cannot by my own thinking or choosing believe in Jesus Christ my Lord nor come to him. Yeah, we're no smarter. It's only by God's love, his grace, that he has sent his Holy Spirit through his gospel to create that faith so that we believe that that is the greatest wisdom, saving wisdom of all. Let's continue by praying. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus into this world so that our sins might be taken away and so that we might enjoy the sure hope of heaven. Through faith, let us always remember the truth of your word. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And we're going to continue by singing two verses of God so loved the world, God loved the world so that he gave. <coughs> And I understand you have to sing a song for a funeral tomorrow. So we're going to jump down to the Lord's Prayer. And we're going to join in the Lord's Prayer. Um, let's join in prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And we'll gather our offerings for Jesus at this time.
Now, children of God, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all.